my name is Pratul and this is Yuva Education. It's a show where we talk to prominent queer artists, activists, icons and allies over a session of color therapy. And joining me today is Rega Chha everybody. Thank you Pratul. My art is going to be bad. That's allowed, right? That's absolutely allowed. Let's get started. <laughs> okay, let's brush go. Brush this up. Let's go. Let's do this. Why is it so difficult for people to understand that feminism is about equality for all and not just one gender? Mm. That also includes any kind of discrimination against gender, gender identity, yeah. sexual orientation, yeah, yeah. and then so on and so forth. Correct. Feminism is basically looking at the world and realizing that life is easier mm. or harder for people based on identities that they have. And that's not just your gender, right? It's also yeah. your orientation, your your caste, your class, the languages you speak. Like feminism has a long history of excluding trans women. There used to be these women's conferences like 60s, 70s when feminism was just like, you know, getting established as this world order and they wouldn't let trans women in. And now thinking about that feels very confusing because now in today's feminism, it feels very sort of obvious that this is for everyone, right? Yeah. Like forget just trans women. We should be letting cis men in also, yeah. right? Obviously, when you are fighting for rights and you are fighting for freedoms, you do it with a lot of anger at the people who have kept that away from you. Yeah. And obviously they aren't happy to be yelled at. You have to really come to terms with the fact that you're going to have to give away, you have to, you know, open the doors of your spaces to other people. Because actually every space becomes more fun when everyone is allowed into it. Absolutely. So. Uh, I think uh, initially when, let's say, I was trying to navigate yeah. the gay world and, you know, yeah. what these feelings are, because of the conditioning or the upbringing that I was in, associating myself with anything that was remotely gay was ah. very scary. So I had to basically overcome all of that for me to oh. be able to like call myself an ally or a supporter. Yeah. Can you just break down in simple terms, what does being an ally or supporter mean for anything? My understanding has been, continues to be, that it's someone who acknowledges that life is harder for you than it is for me because of these identities you hold. And I'm going to do my best mm -hmm. and actually like try to be one of the forces that makes it easier. For me, often the most helpful I can be is to say, I don't know. And I'm kind of nervous. Or even like I have this deeply problematic thought, yeah. you know. With the first time that friends, close friends of mine were coming out, I remember initially like some surprise. And then quickly, you know, that surprise became concern actually. And I think some early allyship came from this place of realizing the ways that their lives were going to get harder. Mm -hmm. And of course, also being worried, knowing the parents of some of these friends, right? And knowing that those are conservative parents, people who won't take it that easily. I don't know, allyship has also been confusing for this reason, because you really wonder, like, how much can I make your life easier, actually, yeah. you know? Yeah. You might not have the solutions, you might not always have the right answers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but at least what you'll do is that you'll give them that little comfort in their heart that okay, yeah. if there is someone that I can confide in, right. then at least I'm not alone in this. You know, being queer is very hard. Correct. Being any sort of minority is very hard. But also just being a person is quite hard. If you are a cis, straight, upper class, upper caste man, you're still surrounded by structures that are confusing and that are like trying to push you to act in really dehumanizing and dehumanized in brutal ways all the time. And something I'm realizing is none of us will be happy if we don't look at the structures that are putting pressure on us and decide to break out of them. How is the painting coming along, by the way? Like it's, um, uh, yeah, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a big reveal in the end, so yeah. <laughs> One of the things was that interview that you did with Kareena Kapoor, by the way. Can you believe? Right? Like, what is life? Oh my God. Why is Kareena Kapoor interviewing me? And I think there was one thing that you mentioned about, like, office temperatures and things yeah. like that. If yeah. you could just, like, shed a little bit of light about what are these little things, you know, that are, like, rooted in our system that are completely neglecting mm. a certain minority, which yeah. could be based on gender or then, right, of course, right. so on further. So the office temperature example, like, blew my mind when I read about office ACs tend to be just absolutely freezing. Yeah. And apparently that's always been better suited to men than to women. Um, that is one thing. But there are other examples I've observed. Like I have some very close friends who are guys uh, who started a startup a few years ago. And they called me over to show it to me. And I was on my period. And I went to the loo and I'm changing my pad and there's no dustbin. And they were just shocked. We all just sat there collectively reckoning with like, oh, this is what happens when all men start a company, right? You can put effort into every single thing, but there are going to be tiny things that make a woman feel like I wasn't thought of as someone who needs to be here. And you can't fix that. A group of men cannot sit together and like 
brainstorm for how do we make this office female friendly. Yeah. You just need a woman in the room and that's true for many identities. I can't make <laughs> your fight as my own and yeah. then, you know, yeah. claim it that, okay, these are my experiences because they're not. Same with like, you know, the internal homophobia that I had to mm. overcome to A, first accept myself, then accept the idea of homosexuality and same-sex relationships. Right. Um, and then, you know, obviously educate myself essentially yes. about, yes. you know, the world around me and how, how does the queer world function. That's something that actually brings me to the next topic, which mm-hmm. is something that's the personal mission that you've taken on is to make the internet a kind and safe place for all. Casual mission. Casual mission, <laughs> yeah. no pressure. Just though. small task. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. give me a little insight of why is that necessary? Why is that important for you first? And then yeah. obviously, you know, how does it affect the people around you? I think there's a lot of room in the internet to replace cancel culture and call out culture with what I'm personally calling growth culture. And I realized that when I was saying things that were, let's say, exclusionary, mm-hmm. um, people reacted with anger and they reacted by yelling at me. And what that did was make me more defensive. And so for me to be pushed to a place of defensiveness or disengagement showed me that, oh wait, this is something that's wrong in the internet. I don't know how we can bring that empathy that comes from seeing someone else's face onto the internet. But I think it's quite urgent that we do. And I haven't been perfect. And I'm still not today. And there are prejudices and biases I still have that I'm still working on. But I don't know if I can say this on Twitter. No, but as as long as you acknowledge it, I think that is half the battle won, right? Yeah. <laughs> is there a burning question that you have for someone who's gay or for the queer community? Oh my god, I, yes. Oh, go on. I'm not the authority to answer this, by the way. I will yeah. try my best. I've always wondered, how do you know who to hit on? See, who to hit on is slightly more subjective. Because hmm. see, I can find people beautiful. Yeah, right? I can find people interesting. Correct. I can find them, you know, mentally stimulating. And if that either one of those things makes me want to approach them, that's how I would approach them. Mm. Doesn't matter your, what your sexual orientation is, what your preference is. The concept of a gaydar, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Where people claim that like, oh, I just know <laughs> who in the room is gay. I just fucking know. How, what? Uh, see, gaydar, I don't believe in. You can look at like some visible signs in people and sure. then, you know, you would, might want to categorize them. Yeah. Me calling somebody gay doesn't make them gay, right? It's still their own personal... That would like, be a you know, cool revelation. superpower to have. Really <laughs> like just Jesus. you, gay from today onwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now see, this is a question that could be problematic okay. if you and I didn't know each other. Now that we have established yes. this, yes. you know, mutual love for each yes. other that we yes. can bring up these things. Yeah. And I want to understand that, okay, if sexuality mm-hmm. is a spectrum... Yeah. And if that's something that you also realize, yeah. have you dipped in the lady pod? <laughs> At this point, I would like to say my parents should stop watching. I have. I have. In college, there was a uh, few months of like, you know, I didn't call it dating because I think letting your identity be morphed like that is a scary thing. Mm-hmm. But there was a woman mm-hmm. I was seeing and hooking up with for several months. And now... I am sitting with this question actually of like, have I, have I kept myself straight because of being attached to like in romance narrative and have I not let myself explore another type of attraction that I have? Actually, this is another question I have for a queer person. Like, what is orientation, right? Is who I feel like being in a relationship with my orientation or is who I just want to like make out with? My orientation, like what is it? I think for me personally, it's attraction of any kind. Okay. Whether it is sexual, physical, you know, just emotional attachment, like whatever. I think yeah. all of that sort of encompasses like what your orientation could be potentially. Okay. I genuinely truly believe that sexuality yeah. is a spectrum. But if it's something that you want to keep it open as, you know, an exploration, then that's great too. Because Maybe that's what exactly. I meant. Yeah. 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 Uh, have you explored by curious dating on dating apps? I right swiped on many and matched with many. And Pratul, I don't know what's going on. I can't talk to them. <laughs> okay. I'm too intimidated. I want to impress you so badly that I'm not going to say anything. Whereas with men, it's like, yeah, man, like what? Huh? Hi. <laughs> sure. That's another whole world of conditioning, right? Where you think that you are a good woman if a man has chosen you. And like, this is what a perfect woman life looks like. But I'm also very excited to just like lead a good and happy and free life. <laughs> so you know what, Pratul? I will go flirt with some women today. Great. If that's your takeaway from the show. That's, you know amazing. what? <laughs> Thank yeah. you for this. <laughs> Pep talk. Amazing. 
See, it wouldn't be much of a talk show if we don't get to know about your guilty pleasures and your pop culture favorites. Hi, hi. Right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. this segment we call being curious. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Marks for the fun. Yes. All right. Uh, you have to be super, super rapid. Uh, like it's a lightning round. You can't think too much. And are you ready? Okay. All right. hmm. This is being curious. Yeah. What's your favorite coming of age book slash movie? Oh my goodness. The first one that came to mind is Catcher in the Rye, and honestly, I'm ashamed of it. And that's why I was like, think of a better one. Think of a better one. But maybe that's just the one that I read when I was coming of age. Okay. <laughs> that's it. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, who was the first queer person you saw in mainstream media? Oh wow. The person I'm thinking of is Neil Patrick Harris and Ellen, and like that generation of white America <laughs> coming out. <laughs> Got it. One queer artist activist icon you everyone must follow. This one's actually easy. Hannah Gatsby. Everyone must watch Nanette. Just watch it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one celebrity crush you couldn't share with anyone. I'm feeling some new feelings for Abhay Deol. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Riga. Uh, mm-hmm. I was gonna say brushes down, but for you, I'm gonna say hands off the painting. <laughs> <laughs> this brings us to the end of uh, oh, this amazing art therapy color session mm-hmm. that we did, and also this amazing conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's time to also reveal the art that we've been like working on it so hard. On the count of three, two, one. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Reveal. Prata, that's us. I love it. It's us in a big shiny rainbow oh, of learning and God. growth. I didn't even see. Oh my God! You've actually matched the colors of our. That is I added glitter to your jacket, which like you should take as some feedback. I, I absolutely will. <laughs> I will add glitter to everything. I thank you. And yours is very beautiful. Thank you. It's uh, a little. It's also for you. It's inspired by you now. Oh my God! Because uh, you're a little sunflower in a star on a starry night. I really. I yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this was our lesson for this week's education. Thank you so much, Rega, for joining us. Use the hashtag education. Follow us on VRUBA and come and join the conversation. Thank you so much, Rega. Thank you. Thank Pratul. you. This was so fun.